work to do. Well, I took my master's head and I joined the heavenly band. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I promise him that I would serve him till I to us and a wonderful man of God and I, I do pray that you be praying about this service because I do believe that lives are going to be touched. Amen. What was interesting is when he came into the States he says this was the first church he had an opportunity to preach in and with that being said I'm glad we're able to catapult him and I know he's been 
just going throughout America preaching the gospel, but I just thank God for what he's doing in, in that capacity. Also, we're having Trunk or Treat, which is going to be on Halloween, which is a Saturday. And I'm asking everybody, please, if you want to bring some candy in, and, and Sister Bridget's already been lining some things up, getting some bags to put the candy in. And uh, no masks, no scary masks. We're not looking for anything like that. This is going to be a time to minister to the community. We're going to be passing out tracts and uh, candy and whatnot. But I want everybody just to come and be a part of that that is willing to help. And if you are, please see me at the church. Also, we're having a youth mission walkathon on the 14th. Uh, it's going to start at 8 a.m. And uh, there's been people that have been donating. We're doing this for our van. And the reason why we need a van is because we have people that like to travel. And in that traveling, we have caravan, three or four vehicles to try to get to one destination, which is expending uh, mucho's amounts of gasolino. And you know that to be true, not to mention just the drivers and so on and so forth. But if we're able to go ahead and purchase a 15 passenger van, guess what? One vehicle, one driver, one bill. Praise be to God. So I want us all to be praying about that. There has been money donated. And uh, we're going to continue just to watch those funds very carefully. And as soon as that right deal comes along, by the grace of God, take a few men with me. We're going to go ahead and slap some cash on the table. And we're going to walk away with a church van. Can you say amen? amen? I'm not looking for any payments whatsoever. I wanted to go ahead and let it be paid in full. And uh, so just be praying about that, if you will, please. And also, we're having Thanksgiving dinner. Hallelujah. And I believe that's going to be in November, right, Sister Bridget? Praise God. Yeah. On the 15th. And if you would, please go ahead and bring sides and drink and dessert. And we also need some turkey cooking volunteers. Anybody want to volunteer to cook a turkey? Anybody in here? Okay, I'll cook all three. No problem. <laughs> we got it worked out. And uh, we'll go ahead and work it out in that capacity. And that's going to be on the 15th. So I ask everybody, please, to go ahead and bring sides and drink. And Sister Shirley, you please bring dessert. <laughs> go ahead and enjoy a, a wonderful pineapple upside down cake. Not getting out. I mean, whatever you bring is fine. Don't get me wrong. But just make sure one of them is a pineapple upside down cake. It's square. Yeah, it's square. Yeah, and, and a good portion of it to be set aside, if you will, please. You know, but what a what a wonderful time that is. And I'll take the part that's right around the pan, if you will, or inside the pan, I guess would be <laughs> the best part of it all the way. Amen. Well, with that being said, uh, do you have a sign-up sheet as far as what's being brought to the sides and whatnot? No, not yet. Okay. Oh no, far from that. Or from that. Praise God. So I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. And just by a show of hands, you know that God has touched your body when you asked him to touch your body. I want to see your hands go up right now in the name of Jesus. You said, Lord, I need your help. I can remember right here in this front row asking God to touch my back. And Brother Perry, he did. Praise be to God. I, I couldn't sleep, nothing in the back capacity. And uh, I just know the pain was so unbearable. Or I hobbled over here at the church and sat right here and said, Lord, you got to do something. Sister Shirley, he did. He touched me and helped me. And I, I just thank God for that. Being wise all the way through. But I thank the Lord for what he's been doing. So if you have a prayer request, I first I want to mention Sister Kim. Uh, she made it out of the hospital. And she is healing right now uh, with her knee surgery. And hopefully this third time will be the last. Uh, um, um, there's no reason for this going on like it does. And with that being said, also, I want us to remember uh, my sister Judy as well. If you will, please, and, and Brother David, uh, have a few hurdles to be jumping here in, in the near future. So I want God to touch them all the way through. And if you have a prayer request, also oh, remember my beautiful daughter-in-law, Sister Gina. She's not feeling well at, at, uh, right now, so let's be remembering her. If you have a prayer request on this side, let me see your hand go up. Sister Shirley. Okay, we'll remember them and lift them up. All right, anybody else? Prayer request, Sister Diane. Go ahead. Yeah, please continue to pray for Kathy. Okay. 
Okay, we sure will lift her up. All right, anybody else here in the middle prayer request? Go ahead, Claire. I understand. And then uh, just something for healing for me is that my cancer is okay. Yeah, just oral problems and oh. dangerous. Amen. God's able. Praise God. Bring him on home. Anybody else here? No. Here my right side prayer request. Sister Bonnie. My daughter and my wife are going. Okay. We'll lift them up. All right. You believe that's gonna happen? Because I sure do. I really do. Anybody else? Prayer request, Sister Judy, go ahead. Um, personal loss of a loved one, and then also dealing with grief with okay. my husband. Okay. All right, Sister Judy. Remember her on Tuesday. Everybody say Sister Judy with her. Sister Judy. Praise yeah. God. Amen. We'll be remembering the sister. I'll touch you all the way. Anybody else over here? Sister Jewel, go ahead. Okay, we'll lift them up. Amen. Anybody else prayer requests? Go ahead, Brian. Okay, praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for healing in that way. Also, I want you to remember uh, Becky and Kevin. She texted me today. They're having some issues. And uh, just want God to touch them and their body. And uh, I know God is able. And when I come standing behind this pulpit, um, I know the devil has a tendency to try to bring in doubt and discouragement. But what I have found out that God's word is true and always stands true. Regardless of what is said, regardless of what I see, regardless of how I feel, the Bible says that faith is that substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I don't know about you, but I've been walking by faith for many, many years now, not by sight. And if I want to look at the, the situation at hand, I'll roll up in a little ball and not even get out of bed. But faith raises us up and gives us the ability to continue to move forward. How many of you believe that right now? Amen. Oh, I do. Praise be to God. Amen. Ladies, come on over here for a minute, please. We're going to pray for Sister Judy. Y'all stand up. We're going to take these needs unto the Lord. Amen. I don't want to miss them. Brother David, you got any more? Or, excuse me, brother. Lord, had Brother Gene, any prayer requests, brother? Okay, we'll lift them up. Brother Sean? All right, we'll lift them up as well. Amen. Sister Judy, you got any prayer requests? Unsaved, okay. All right, Sister Jeremy. Okay. All right. Okay. So, we know that God is able. To go ahead and make things right that the devil's trying to make for wrong. But I know through all this, God has never lost control. I know he hasn't. And I do know by faith you're holding on to his never changing, nailed, scarred hand. I want God to touch your body right now. Dear Father, Lord, we come here before you. And we know, dear Lord, that we're absolutely nothing without you. And God, I'm asking you, Lord, to touch my sister and me, Father, right now in the name of Christ. I'm asking you, my Lord, every doctor, every nurse, Lord, to prepare a way. And I'm asking you, Father, to allow this to be uh, a platform, God, to where she's able to preach this gospel and share this love and grace of who you are. Father, I'm asking you, Lord, to touch my sister right now. And Lord, I know by your stripes we're healed, not only in the physical, Lord, but also in the emotional, God. Touch her right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise you and we thank you, Father. God, in Jesus' name, touch Brother David. Give him strength, Lord. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you believe God's going to do this? Touch your body right now. Oh, I believe it. Oh, praise the Lord. I believe it. I know he's able in the name of Jesus. Oh, let's pray for these others, please. Dear Father, Lord, once again, we come humbly here before you, knowing that we're absolutely lost without you. Father, you know the very needs of everybody that is here today. Lord, you know the lost loved ones, God. Those, dear God, that are running right now from you, I'm asking you, Lord, to stay them. Touch their hearts. Touch their minds. 
And Father, bring them unto you. Lord, bring them unto an altar. An altar of repentance, dear Father. In the name of Jesus. My Lord, those that are feeling ill in their body. I'm asking you, my God, right now. Not thing within ourselves, but by the precious blood of your beloved Son. God, to have your way in the lives right now. Touch the body, the mind, dear Lord. And have your way. Oh, Father, we love you. We thank you. Touch this service here, Lord. Prepare hearts and minds. And help us once again to stand. Oh, when others are falling. When others are leaving, God. Help us to stand against the wiles of the devil. Oh, my Lord, we love you. We praise you and we thank you. Lord, bless abundantly. Help us, oh, Father, to do the same. In Jesus' name we do pray. And the church says amen. And amen. Look at your neighbor and say he's going to do it. Now look at your neighbor again and say he's really going to do it. Look at your neighbor and say I'm going to continue to pray for these needs. Don't be lying down, church. Praise God. Amen. We're going to continue to be praying for these needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I lost my flag in battle. In his hands, I'm taking it to Jesus. coming in them clouds. You still believe in the rapture? I hope you do. I hope you do. Justice Isaiah, where you at, son? He's in my head. Where's my boy? Brother Perry, help us out, please. Amen. I'll give you all an opportunity to give here. Uh, come help us out, please, my brother. Lord, brother Fauna, come on up here. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> I want you all, please, to give out of a heart of love. That's what it is. And 
I want you to know that as we continue to move forward into the very purpose of what God has here, purpose in Moorhaven, that we're going to stand and we're going to stand in such a way that it will continue to shake the very gates of hell. And as the gates are shaken, I'm going to tell you they will not prevail. We're going to bust hell wide open and free those who are captive. I'm not going to sit here and teach you a religious act. I'm not going to sit here and teach you how to flip and flop around and say, boy, am I holy. I'm going to teach you to stand. And I'm going to teach you how to give. But also I'm going to teach you how to give out of the heart of love and not fear of going to hell. Mm -hmm. I want you to be able to give as God has allowed you to give. Purposeful. Out of obedience. I feel the spirit of God here right now. And I know God's going to have his way. Big things are going to be happening here, church. I do know the Holy Ghost and his breath is starting to turn this very gospel ship. And I promise you we're not going to come up the dock and just tie off and say, boy, did we have a pleasure cruise. No. We're going to go straight on into this storm. And we're going to get to the other side. The Spirit of God is going to lead us in God. Sister Diane, would you please pray over this altar? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we humble ourselves, Lord. We ask, Father, that you would move in a mighty way. That you would just come before you. Oh, oh. Thank you. And Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that we are children of the Most High God. Father, we pray that you would go ahead and bless everyone that has something to give. And bless those, Father, that do not. We ask and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give as you're giving unto God. Come in glory. Will Jesus come in glory, bride? Fear will never be well. 
children's and teens' churches, Reverend Lee, going to stand up. I know Brother Trey has a word for them. And I know right now, Pastor Adam, a word for you. I want to thank the Lord for our church and what he's been doing. Thank the Lord for the trials we've been going through. He say, yes, I am. I'm crazy for Jesus. And I want to go ahead and thank the Lord for trusting us to do the things that we're going through. Because what it does produce is a Christ-like character at the end of it. You're not going to hear a gospel being preached in such a way that just brings about an, oh, Lord, get me out of this right now, oh, Lord. And I'm just, you know, I'm telling you, if you want to give that devil a black eye, go ahead and praise God in the midst of your storm. And you will see truly the presence of God enter your facility wherever you're at. And I do believe God will be glorified all the way through. How many of you believe that right now? Oh, praise the Lord. Son, there's just something about that spot right there with you. I don't know what it is. Brother Perry, are you trying to trip him when you walk? <laughs> That's just water. Amen. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, if you will, please. And let me get this right here and right now. I want us to look as we once again dive in with the thought of forgiveness. And, oh, are you serious? Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke. And if you would, please stand. Luke chapter number 23. And we're going to start at verse number 32. Luke 23, verse number 32. If you're there, say amen. And the word of God says, and there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they this which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his, gar his raiment and cast lots. Verse 35 says, And the people stood beholding. We're in chapter 23. Verse 35, And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, Offering him vinegar and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which hang railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing that thou art on the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, look what it says, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man, everybody say this man, hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me 
when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Verse 34 is truly what I want to springboard off of right here. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Pray with me, dear Father. Desperately need you right now, God, to touch our hearts, touch my mind, Lord. Open up this word in such a way to where others will be able to know who you are. And Father, help me to find that place, God, where faith is solely what I am holding on to. And Lord, the hope of this soon coming Christ will bring about a comfort and a peace. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. We pray, amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you this thought, the tension and sin revealed. The tension and sin revealed. In this particular verse that we read out in Luke chapter number 23, verse number 34, he says, then Jesus, he said this, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. What I love about this letter here, this portion of the gospel, it was written by a physician, a physician by the name of Luke. And Luke was able to pin these words in this particular way after hearing testimony of how Jesus was crucified. You will see throughout the synoptic gospels a reflection of how he was crucified. And a lot of them resemble the same portions of scripture. The story was told, the story was seen, but also the story was lived out. But then as you get to the Gospel of John, you're going to see something a little deeper there. John was one that lasted to the end. He was believed he was up in age, and he didn't die a martyr, but he died of natural causes. And you're going to see towards the end of his life, he truly had one portion of this gospel which brought it all in together, and he preached that portion in such a way which truly knocked the very pins out of the devil's gate, and that was you need to love one another. You need to forgive one another. If somebody says they love God and hate their brother, they're not of God. They're a liar. In fact, they're of the devil. That's hardcore to hear. Do you hear me, church? If you hate your brother without a cause and say you love God, how do you love the Lord who you haven't seen? And you sit there and say you hate your brother who you have. I want you to think about this church. We're living in a day and age where truly an answer to relationship and peace is given in one word. What is that church? It is love. And through that love, you're going to see another portion of this Bible which must be preached to the fullness. What is that, Pastor? Forgiveness. Last week, we preached a message dealing on a one-on-one -on -one basis on things that have happened. How many of you have ever had something done wrong unto you? If you have, let me see your hand up there right now. Okay, we dealt with that. And I believe the Lord has truly given us a word in how to deal with that. How do we deal with it? We forgive them. Everybody say, we forgive them. So everybody that I ask to raise your hand, if somebody's ever done something wrong to you, let me ask you this question as I stand before you, a reverend, a man of God, have you forgiven them? Because if you haven't, you're in sin. I've been called to do this. <laughs> can't get away from it. And we see life being given unto these that are crucifying the Lord. And he said these words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Notice he didn't say, I forgive them. He went ahead and looked up to heaven and said, Father, 
Forgive them, for they know not what they do. What he was doing, Brother Jesus, was interceding for those who are running amok. And literally, it was funny about it is still fulfilling the will of God. And yet here they are thinking they're stopping a man for blaspheming the very God who they say they are worshiping. I'm going to tell you this right now. That is the Lord looked up to heaven and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I believe all of heaven still. I believe the angels looked at the Father. And if I could go ahead and preach this the way I feel it in my soul, I believe the Father Father looked down and said, Son, I will. Son, I will. And I thank God for that because I believe as that word went across the sky that it still is lasting today. What do you mean, Pastor? There's some people out there that are living in sin and they have no idea that they're living in sin. And if they do, they're blinded by the fact that there's a Savior who died to save them and break the very chains that are destroying their lives. So the words are screamed out across humanity. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I'm glad about that. Because if the gavel would have came down on my life many moons ago, and if justice would have been served for what thus saith the Lord, this man of God would not be standing here preaching to you today. And I believe the majority of you wouldn't be sitting here either. Can you imagine the tension that was felt when he said that as he was on the cross? Sister Diana, can you imagine how those words were heard to a people who were killing him? Can you imagine what the soul felt, the emotions and how they run higher in a, in a heated sense, in a heated argument. You see, what they were living through was an excited riot. There was, all tension was built, but also you see like a pack of dogs. Have you ever noticed a dog that sit there and get in a fight? Then all of a sudden what happens? Another one will jump in and you'll start to see a pack of dogs on what? The weaker dog. They'll attack him and bite him. And the other one might not even be a, a part of it. The other one ate his food. That's why he's fighting. The other ones are just excited because there's some growling, some snarling, some spitting going on. And I'm telling you right now, what the Lord was saying to these people is you are living in a carnal kind of way, you're attacking who you think is the weakest dog. But I want you to go ahead and take that word dog and spit it around and you'll find out that listen to me, you might be attacking this old dog, but this old dog ain't a dog. This dog is God. It is God in the flesh. And what you are in fact doing is nailing your creator to an old rugged tree. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The tension that was being built during that time was a physical tension, an emotional tension, but also a spiritual tension. Tension is a pulling or a pressing that if not put with the right amount of pressure will tear something apart. I can remember me and my boys, we had the privilege of going fishing during the first day of snook season. Woo! Praise God. Getting out there and enjoying them snook. And I figured what I would do is be there early, Brother John. And when it went ahead and September 1st came around, I'd be there early in the morning before everybody and catch them snooks just waking up and hoping they're wanting a good snack, hoping they're waking up for breakfast. And I sat there, and me and my boys, we camped out. But wouldn't you know, you got to love Florida. You love Florida, you can look in one side and say, whoa, what a beautiful day. Then all of a sudden the rain drops. 
will hit you in the face. You say, what is going on? You look behind you and you think the apocalypse is happening with the storm that is coming. So here we are enjoying this time of camping out and getting ready to go snook fishing that morning. And there was a hellacious storm that come through. And we're sitting there and we got our tent propped up. And I'm saying, oh, this tent will hold up. It'll be all right. I don't remember if the strings were connected or not. But I can tell you this, that wind blew so hard that that tent went sideways and hit the ground. And I said, Lord, have mercy. That tent's going to blow away. We're sitting in the car watching the show. I really don't enjoy camping. Only about a night, that's all I got. And in that night, I'm telling you, that's about coming in. I'm really just there for the food is what it is. There's nothing like one of them sausages cooked over a fire. Some of them s'mores. That's all it is right there. That's all I'm like. But I'm telling you, that tent was sideways. That rain, rain, like rain. I've never seen rain before. And knocked that tent there. But praise be to God, the stake still held it together. And I wish it would have blown away for that capacity. Why, Pastor? Because maybe I wouldn't have a foot of water in the tent after it was all over with. I've heard of a water bed, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Of course, we got in there and tried to get that water out of there. But I'm telling you, if that tent would have had the right tension put upon it, it would have been held up the right way. It would have stood up against that storm. Never would have buckled. That storm couldn't stand a chance. But I'm telling you, it wasn't right. It wasn't set up in that capacity during that. We're in there with a roll of paper towels. <laughs> trying to get all that water out of the tent. Trying to get the sleeping bags. You know what we did, Sister Bonnie? We slept in the car. <laughs> Had the seat pulled back. They turned the vehicle on, run the air conditioning real quick, too. <laughs> oh, snook season. Oh, snook season in the morning. <sighs> it did get the point where it's like, okay, it's getting a little comfortable here. But I'm telling you, if that tent was set up in such a right way, never would a drop of water got inside of it. And I'm telling you, as the Lord was there that day, and they were pulling on him, they were whipping him, spitting on him, and he looks up to heaven and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they Oh, if we could only imagine what they felt during that day when he said that. We could only imagine for a portion of time. Oh, I feel God right here. Pastor wants to help you. Why am I here right now? Why are you here right now? Why are you here in the sound of this voice? I believe God wants to help you this morning. Does this help me? Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Oh, thank the Lord for what he's doing. I thank God for what I've seen right there because I do believe it's confirmation of where I need to be. But can you imagine the tension that was there? I remember by Brother the Apostle Stephen, one of the first martyrs that was stoned. And as he sat there and, and just preached the gospel to a people, but you know, church, what he was, he was uh, full of the Holy Ghost as he preached the very gospel unto these people. And I can tell you as they dealt with that, all oh, the very Israel and those that 
uh, went ahead and crucified him. They couldn't handle it. It's interesting when you read Acts chapter 7 as, as Stephen was preaching. He went all through the Bible. I believe Stephen was uh, quite like a preacher like myself. What do you say? I preach everything under the sun and try to bring it back here to where we started from. They call that shotgun preaching. Some of you trying to fly away, I pull out the shotgun and shoot every one of you. In a spiritual kind of way, of course. When Stephen was there preaching this gospel, he let him know he called him a stiff neck people. I've always been stiff neck. What stiff neck said? You ain't telling me nothing. I ain't turning my head. You ain't going to tell me nothing right now. I'm not turning my head to this Christ. He said, you're the ones that crucified him. There's people right now renting and raving, not understanding that this was God's perfect plan. Preach this gospel. Make people mad. How many of you know that when you start dealing with the spiritual and you start touching where people are at. People start getting aggravated about it. What's up? Their flesh starts rising up. Emotion starts getting hotter. And then you're starting to deal with the spiritual tension of the today. It's the word that God says. Stephen said in verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hard in the ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do we. Ye. You ain't never going to hear Joe Holstein preach that to a people. <laughs> you stiff neck and uncircumcised of heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did before you. You don't need to say amen right now. Make sure. Amen. We resist the Holy Ghost. It deals with your heart. Now you going to tell me how to live. I'm going to live how I want to live. You know you're in a Pentecostal church when you're buying a Bible ticket. <laughs> oh, let's raise our hands right now. Oh, boy. Oh, dear Father, have your way. Have your way. Hey, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. That just one is Jesus Christ. And whom ye have now the betrayers and murderers. Now, it's just a wonderful Sunday morning message, isn't it? <laughs> we don't want nothing. We don't want no milk, milk, milk down, water down. Isn't that just a wonderful thing? To let them know that you are murderers because you killed the just one. Guilty. I'm telling you right now, church, every time we, everybody say we, yeah. resist the Holy Ghost, it was just like us grabbing a hammer and putting a nail in his hand.
Every time we resist the Spirit of God, it was as if we went ahead and spit on ourselves. <clears throat> Notice, Pastor said, we. That's French for yes. <clears throat> You have received the law by the disposition of angels, those that are divine messengers that have told you and have not kept it guilty, guilty, guilty. When they heard these things, they are like, okay, you're right. We'll go ahead and humble ourselves and fall into place with God. The Bible says, and when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. Oh, I wonder what that was like, Brother Gene. They got mad. They're aggravated. They felt it in the heart and said, he's stepping on our toes. We don't want no part of this man calling me a murderer. Stiff neck. I'm not having nobody tell me how to live. I'm going to live how I want to live. Resisting the very spirit of God. I so wish somebody else was preaching this so I could be out there. I really didn't think this is what it was going to be like when I was studying it, but I couldn't get the message up on the phone, so here it is. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it is, church. To lift up our heads and be stiff necked against the very spirit of God. It is rebellion at its finest. It is that carnal nature. It is a man or woman who has forsaken the altar of God. When they heard these things, they took the pastor to lunch and fed him and his family really good. They took the pastor to lunch all right. He was the main course. <laughs> We're not a murderer, let's kill him. We don't want to hear that anymore. I don't want to hear that anymore. They gnashed on him with his teeth. That's looking at him in the eyes. Some believe they ran up to him and literally started to bite him like a pack of wild dogs to see a man who was telling them the truth. I'm telling the church we can't get by by a little, you know, a little sermon and a boy, this is how we need to do it. Come in and pray three minutes and go outside and live like the devil. We can't make it to heaven like that. We can't make it to heaven in that capacity. I can't make it to heaven in that capacity. I can't forsake the altar of God. 
and expect to make it all the way home. I'm not going to preach to you a religious message. I'm not going to preach to you a denominational message. I believe through the Spirit of God I'm going to preach to you the truth. That's the only thing, church, that can make us free. Set sails to the middle of the storm, church. We're going to make it through. Grab your robe. Hold on tight. It's going to be a bumpy ride. But he, the Bible says, is Stephen. He looked up. He was full of the Holy Ghost. He looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. Woo! As he was standing preaching the truth, Sister Judy, he was standing sure and let him know you're not the ones that God has called his. You killed him. The ones that he called his are those that have repented and been born again and have their name written in the Lamb's book of life. You can't make it to heaven by a bloodline. You can't make it to heaven by going to church every Sunday. The only way you can make it to heaven is to be born again. Woo! Woo! Praise be to God. You can't make it to heaven any other way. I said it was full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he looked up to heaven. Woo! He looked up to heaven. He looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. He saw the splendor of his majesty. And the Bible says he seen Jesus standing on the right hand of God. I believe, Sister Judy, as he was looking up into heaven and saw the perfect Lamb of God looking down, I read in Scripture where it says he sits at the right hand of the Father, but I believe with this Stephen being the first martyr, the one that gave his life for the cause, Jesus stood up for a moment and looked down and said, Come on, son, hold on a little while. He didn't retaliate. Stephen didn't retaliate. Pick up the stones and started to throw them back. Like I would have. <laughs> well, you better knock me out first yet. Just saying. <laughs> Them stones better hit that temple the first time and knock me out. You throw rocks on me, you better believe we're going to have a rock war. <laughs> we'll let it begin. I love this. Every Sunday I get to preach to the choir. <laughs> I get to preach to the ones that never retaliated when people throw rocks at me. That's what I like to hear. Come on now. Some of you even... When you mow your grass, and them rocks from neighbor's house are in your yard, you hit it in such a way, and you shoot that rock right out the other neighbor's yard. Come on. Come on now. Some of you don't even have to throw the rocks. You just hit it just the right way. Try not to. <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> so Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father of God. He 
And then the Bible said, Behold, as he seen the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God, then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon with one accord. You're going to find out, church, that the more you stand for God, more people are going to attack you. You're going to find out the more that you stand and testify about the glory of God, you're going to make that devil man, you're going to make that flesh man, you're going to see emotions rise up, and you're going to be in the spiritual before you know it. They cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon me with one accord. Oh, I wish we could get to that point. I wish when somebody would say something against us, we can look up to heaven and say, I see the glory of God. I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. I wish we could put our hands in the air and say, praise be to God for fulfilling his will. I wish, church, we could get to that place. I wish we could get to that place, church. The tension that was up there. And this is where the tent fell, Sister Diana. This is where it fell. Because as soon as he said that, I see him standing at the right hand of God. That's when they cried out. They yelled out, get him, kill him, with a loud voice. And stopped their ears and said, I'm not hearing what the Spirit of God says unto me. They ran upon him in one accord. And they cast him out of the city. They cast him out like garbage. There's too many churches do that to pastors these days. There's too many churches that would have a pastor go ahead and step on their toes before you know what they're calling headquarters and saying we don't want him over here anymore. If those don't do it, I'll tell you what, they'll come in the sanctuary, they'll sit there and won't do anything. And by their actions saying, we don't want no part of you anymore. They'll come in and try to starve it out. Oh, I know we're doing, we're okay here. I know y'all love me. Praise God. Amen. But I promise you this ship is going straight forward into this. And I do believe through this last COVID, it went ahead. A few people got knocked off. A few coming other ways. But guess what? We're going to keep moving forward. Sister Diana, he hasn't stepped us this far forward to turn around and just knock up and say, boy, haven't we had a time? No. As the Lord Jesus Christ is the captain of this vessel. I believe once again by the wind, by the power of the Holy Ghost, these sails have caught it, and we're going straight into it. Praise be to God. But you know what he's done thus far? He has gotten us ready. Hallelujah. It ain't going to be what I'm going to do. No. It's going to be I know what to do. What is that? When we start going into the devil's nest, you're going to go ahead and see people hate you. You're going to see people talk about you. You're going to see people turn their backs on you. And all you are called to do is look up into heaven and say, I see the See Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. I pray we can do that. I pray we don't bow down. I pray we don't pick up rocks. I pray we don't start throwing them. I pray we look up to heaven and praise his holy name. Praise his holy name because he found us worthy. He's found us worthy. They cast them out like a bag of garbage and stoned them. But I love this part right here. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. <laughs> you know what that is? That's God's divine plan in order 
That's God's perfect will being done. Because we know Saul will be instantly born again and be turned into Paul. Who in fact will be one of the men who has stood in the gap and saved many, many lives because of his obedience to the will of God. And they stoned Stephen calling upon God. I pray that that's how I go. I pray when I breathe my last breath, I'm calling upon him in such a way where my hand can go up and I can praise his holy name. I pray when the last breath comes through, I can look up into heavens and say, I know you love me and I love you too. I pray my heart can be fixed on the one who saved my life. I pray the one who has given me chances not once but twice. I pray God would come and fill us all so we can stand tall against adversity and all. And we will know that he is our king. He is our Lord. He is our savior. He is the one who is God's son who has given his life and given it to us more abundantly in such a way where we can stay on the straight and narrow path that will lead us all the way. In church, you can last. You can last. You can last. Praise be to God. He says, I am the beginning and the ending. I am the first and the last. Oh, Stephen, looking up to heaven, I pray I will be able to stand in such a way where we can praise his holy name when he calls his home, calling upon him. Oh, and he says, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And the Bible says, and he kneeled down. You know what that tells me, church? In the mix of all of this, he stood. Do you hear me? What he was doing, Sister Judy, in the midst of all the pain, all the hurt, all the emotional tension, the physical tension, and the spiritual tension. He stood. Praise be to God. He stood. Do you hear me, church? I said he stood. How do I know? Because the Bible says when it was time for him to come home, he kneeled down. Woo! Praise God. He kneeled down. He knew it was time right then and there. Oh, church, it's not time to give up. It's not time to quit. It's not time to turn around. It's time to stand in the power of God Almighty. It's time to stand in his Holy Ghost and power. The Bible says, and he kneeled down, and he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He said, don't lay this sin to the charge. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I wonder, church, if we're there right now. I wonder, church, if we are able to stand in that capacity and say, Lord, lay not this charge unto them. I want you to notice something here, church, when he cried out. I want you to notice that what they did was getting madder. Their anger rose up. And they wanted to hurt him no more. So I'm telling you, as you are standing in the gap for sinners, you're going to see that the very life that God has given you, that devil is going to try to steal. Praise be to God. I want to show you something here. As we deal with this tension, and I'm going to be closing in this capacity, okay? After, after we pray, and I beg of you to pray, I beg of you to spend time with God today before we leave. I beg that you do. Because I want to show you if I could have some demonstration.
Hey, brother, could you stand for a moment and help? Brother Perry, will you stand, please? Brother Keith, come on, please, sir. You're all right. Now I want to show you what they did. Keith, I want you to stand right here for a moment. I want you to stand right there and stand right there. When Christ said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It mess. It, it held on to such a physical tension. And I want you to grab my hand. I want you to go that way with me. I want you to pull. I'm okay right there, brothers. Keep holding. Don't break my arm, brother King. Yeah, I know you're good. Keep holding. There was a tension right there. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The emotional level jumped to high octane right then and there for the first time. Oh, right there. And then suddenly, I sat there and the spiritual was starting to be hit right there where his very feet, they thought it was over with when they nailed him to the cross. And I want you, brother, to go ahead and grab me right here in the back right there. As he's got a hold of my feet right now with a little bit. I know it's on my back, but you know what I'm saying. That tension was so, just so high right then. And that tension, people lose it then. When the pressure, the tension, go ahead and pull a little bit more as they were doing that. You see, they had them, the tension was there, it was pulling hard. But I'm telling you, they had a tabernacle that they couldn't rip. You hear me? Because he already gave his body over in such a way it wasn't them that was taking their life. He was giving it. And what he did is he flipped the script. Can you say amen? amen. Woo! He flipped the script on them as they thought they had him bound up and tied up and not moved. What he did come this way a little bit, Brother Gene, he just switched it out and said, Father, forgive them. Go ahead, pull that way a little bit. Go ahead and pull that way a little bit. <laughs> Woo! Go ahead right there, brother. You all right? Pull a little bit more. Oh, they pulled a little while. They said, wait a minute. I see that one sitting on the pew this morning. Pull me a little more. Let me feel it. Woo! Feel me a little more. I see a backslid. He wants to pull me a little bit more. There's healing to be given. That tent hell. Woo! Praise be to God. A little bit more tension there in the back. There it is. And I'm telling you what it did is bring about a perfect balance throughout humanity. When he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. What they were doing was being used instrumentally in saving the world. And I'm telling you, church, they didn't even realize it. <laughs> A little bit more, there's somebody that needs to hear it. Spread me out a little bit more, please. But you know what did tear? <laughs> During that time, they looked up to him and said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. There was an earthquake, darkness was across the land, and instantly the curtain that goes into the holiness of holies ripped wide open, which was a symbol of his flesh. And I'm telling you, when the bread was given, entrance into the holiness of God was given, and all that would come, praise be to God, could come in and sup with him. Oh, let's all stay right now. Let's raise our hands. Praise be to God. Let's bless him for a moment. Can we? Hallelujah. 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 We're good, brother. Pray you to stand right there. Keep praising him, brother. Praise be to God. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, there wasn't a, a pound of tension more upon that man though he didn't have full control over the whole situation. They thought they had him tied up. They thought they had him nailed to a stake where he couldn't move. But I'm telling you, even in his place where they thought they had him stop, praise be to God, he was still saving the whole world. And you know what he did? He came back and told him, now I give you power to forgive sins. 
I never understood that until now. He says, you got power to remit. You know, you got power to forget. You can hold on to it or you can let it go. I'm giving you that power right now. I'm giving you that power right now. Don't you say you can't do it because he's giving it to you. Woo! Praise God. And what I choose to do is forgive. And Father, I'm asking you right now to touch your people. I'm asking you, my Lord, to come in. Father, and touch hearts and minds and prepare us and draw us closer unto this promise. Help us, Father, to forgive as you call us to forgive. And Father, as we pray and intercede for others, Father, forgive them as you have forgiven us. I pray that each and every one of you will find a place to spend some time with him right now. It's still early. And I want you to pray out loud. Let the Lord hear your voice. Say, well, I'm feeling pretty good, but I'm asking you to pray for others who have done you wrong. I'm asking you to lift their names up and say, God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. After you ask them, oh, God, forgive them. Forgive them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Let's pray right now. Oh, my God, I forgive them. Lord, forgive me. Oh, my God, have your way. Have your way right now. Dear Lord Jesus, have your way. Oh, my God, not my will, but your will be done. Holy Spirit, I pray. Oh, God, forgive them, Lord. God, you've given us power, Lord, to forgive. Help us to do exactly that, God. Oh, my God, I praise you. I praise you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Blessed Savior. Blessed God will give what you give. Come on. Help people to draw this unto a tabernacle of grace and mercy. Come on. Oh, Lamb of God, draw us unto that place. Will you do it, God? Will you do it, Lord? In the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. Not my will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, give us strength. Give us strength, Lord, to stand. 